And welcome back, Bonnie. Uh, they're talking to Capcom now, you, you said just a second ago as we were coming out of that commercial. Yes, uh, the Capcom uh, for Advent here is John Creighton. They were having a discussion with him about some sensors. I didn't follow it completely, but everything seems to be doing well. And at about 39 minutes, we'll uh, perform what's called an orbiter maneuvering system burn, an Ohm's burn, puts us into a circular orbit. And so that slight burn will put us at 160 miles, and then we'll continue with the rest of our on-orbit operations. And what are they doing right now? You, you actually having flown the shuttle before, Bonnie has before us, I don't know whether you can see it, but she has laid out the second-by-second second flight plan right now. And you were, you were noting on my line here that that Ohm's tube burn, very important in the sequence. Well, yes, because it does put us into the proper orbit from which that we are able to stay in orbit instead of being in elliptical orbit, and also the orbit that we plan to deploy the satellite from, the TDIS. So we need this burn. Uh, what I have in front of me are copies of the checklists that the crew actually have on board, mm -hmm. one being an ascent checklist, and the other is called a crew activity plan, which lays out our activities not only hour by hour, but once we get on orbit, you'll see it lays us out by minute by minute. And this is what we spend up to a year or a year and a half rehearsing before we fly. Before you ever go to the launch pad. Uh, absolutely. And when we were coming out around, uh, what was it, about 5.35 this morning, it was still dark outside, we were making our way in a car to uh, our CNA work spot here. You were pointing out that uh, right now, astronauts are training for missions that will occur in 1990, 91, 92. Well, we have astronauts in our office following these missions. We work with the customers. We work with experimenters and even helping to design their hardware. Uh, we assign an official crew somewhere between a year and a year and a half, depending on whether or not it's a space lab mission. So you can train uh, 16, 18 months uh, before you actually fly on a specific mission. And the five men on this mission, they all are a very experienced crew. They've each flown twice. Uh, they. Uh, are members of both the 78 and 80 classes. I have a couple classmates on that flight. Mm -hmm. Which ones? Well, uh, Dave Hilmers and uh, Mike Lounge were in my class. Is it unusual for NASA to pack that many heavies, that many experienced pros, and uh, two, three-fifths of these guys represent some of the best combat flying uh, in Vietnam, and thousands of miles flying? flight time behind that stick? Is it, is, is well, it actually, visual? Well, it's visual? actually a, a combination of factors. Most of this crew had been put together ever before the accident. Mm -hmm. uh, they were to fly a different mission. They had a different pilot. Um, he went back to the Air Force. Uh, but we have uh, three uh, military uh, astronauts on board and two civilians. It's a typical mix. I think that there was an effort to try to make sure we had at least a flown person on because of the importance of this mission. But generally what we try to do and have done in the past is to uh, mix the crews because obviously you have to start someone flying at some point to give them experience to be experienced. And on my flight, it was my first flight, but with four other people. We will continue our coverage of the flight of the shuttle Discovery in a moment. This is a CNN special report, America's space mission. At the Kennedy Space Center, CNN's Bernard Shaw. Officially, NASA calls the shuttle Discovery Space Shuttle Mission STS-26. Well, a short while ago, after uh, STS-26 lifted off from uh, Launch Pad 39B, in launch control, the administrator, the head of NASA, Dr. James Fletcher, addressed his people. Well, to start with, wow! <laughs> that was really something. Uh, it's been a long wait, two and a half years, or a little bit better than that. You guys have been working your tails off for the last, I don't know how long, long hours, overtime. Uh, fixed all the problems, ready to go. When it's time to go, we went. All I can say is that the nation owes you a lot and will continue to owe you a lot in the, in the months and years to come. This is the first 
of a new era, as we've said before. Congratulations for a job well done. And Dr. Fletcher, no doubt pleased that he was proved wrong. You might recall, if you were with us early, early this morning, CNN's John Holloman talked with uh, Jim Fletcher, and uh, he allowed us how he thought that it was a 50-50 chance to go either way, that it wouldn't go, and he said, and it might not go. And, of course, it went, and uh, he's bursting with pride. John Zarella is down in the VIP section, and he has a very important guest. John? That's, that's right, Bernie. With me is Kathleen Beers, and like so many of us, Kathleen was here two and a half years ago on that uh, very unfortunate day, but Kathleen was here for a very special reason. She was one of the ten finalists in the Teacher in Space contest, and uh, it must have been an agonizing two years and eight months for you. It was a long two and a half years, it really was, and it was almost approaching the three years, and it's been a long wait. I feel so exhilarated now. It, I feel really weightless. I feel like I put in a month's work in when those en main engines were lit. I mean, this one's for Challenger. I was just so excited. This is, I, I can't, I just, I feel like I'm floating. This is just, this is fantastic. I imagine it must feel as if a, a giant weight has been lifted off your shoulders. You bet. My feet aren't touching the floor and the ground. And I remember several times when Scobie would say in training, when things were like lagging a little bit, and Scobie would say, time to press on, time to press on. And believe me, when they lit those main, main engines, all I could think of Scobie saying, time to press on. And I thought, go for it. This is for that whole crew. Their you mission continues. This put, a lot, this put closure to it, because up to that time, the chapter was unwritten. And, and today, we're on our way. It's, it's all been too good. From 1904, Wright Brothers, we grew wings at Kitty Hawk, and we put footprints on the moon, and, and Skylab, and Space Lab, and the shuttle missions. And we can't, there's no going back. We've got to go out there for the 21st century and explore and discover. And I'm just so glad we're, we're back on track. Well, your eyes were glued to the launch pad. I know some of us uh, <laughs> didn't want to glued. watch it. I was uh, They were glued. I was crying. Oh, it was just fantastic what what's I, next now for you I, I I hope to be on it I really do in fact someone said at the hotel this morning what will you be thinking five seconds before liftoff and I said Godspeed and I wish I were on it and you have no reservations of flying on the space shuttle none at all absolutely none their pioneering is a special privilege and there are things in life that are worth the discovery the exploration that transcend the risk and the danger you're a school teacher uh, 10th, 11th, 12th graders. What do you say to those many school children who watched two years and eight months ago and now watched again? Things are fine. It's fixed. Uh, problems arise, and uh, this, the space uh, system will always be state of the art and the edge of tech on the edge of technology. And nothing is is completely safe, and they they need to realize that now. We haven't built the safe car yet. I had a a month after the uh, tragedy, I had a hair dryer that was recalled. So when you think of those things, it's it's we need we need the sense of. To, to proceed on, there is a sense of element, a sense of danger, and if it weren't for, for really the vision of, of Columbus and those people on Westward Ho, uh, we, we wouldn't be standing right here. If they would have calculated and thought out, well, it won't work because, in fact, one of the things that really gave me strength when, when Dick Rutan and Gina Yeager came back from Voyager, they had shared a, a tribute with me that I, I read to all the audiences and to to have a dream and follow that dream and go for it and because so many times i've i've done a lot of mountain climbing and and still transatlantic and people will say it's dangerous or why do you do it and you just have to follow that dream and and go for it and it's for the i i want to make sure i when i'm gone i i want to feel like i left the place i've left earth a better place that i just didn't journey through that there was an imprint and i, I made a difference and obviously the dream now continues Back to you, Bernie. 